So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Economic Times Focus Roundtable. Today we'll be looking at the twin engines for success as it stands in today's organizations, talent and technology. It's a well-worn cliche that people are the business's most valuable asset. But just because it's a tired phrase doesn't mean it's untrue, especially in the world of high tech. In the way the entire workforce is over there, because I, because I, I have worked in a big four, right? And 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 slowly we started moving the way towards digital. And I've seen those cold stares from our old partners, you know, when people walk into the offices with shorts, right? Because it's it's such a big big cultural change for people who have not been you know exposed to it at a very very young age. So on, you know being on that particular point, I will quickly move to Surya, who is you know heading uh, was the head of talent management for some uh, for a company called Wipro Digital. So Surya, if you could throw some light, how these new native digital workplaces are different from the traditional ones, and how is the nature of work different from the traditional ones also. So, Surya? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Surya. We can All right, you. I think the, the shift in the workplace has been talked about uh, already by my co-panelists, but I think what will be interesting if I can focus a little bit on the nature of work, how is that shifting? And um, I think there are a lot of shifts that are happening today. And I'm not going to talk a lot about remote working, distributed working, working anywhere, etc. That has already been talked about at length. To avoid duplication, um, I think the shift that's happening today uh, to a great extent is um, a workplace which had only human beings to a workplace where human beings and machines are going to coexist. That's a major shift that has started happening already. And we'll see more of that. I think there are predictions that in the next five years, probably 50% of the workflow will be managed by machines and 50% of the tasks will be managed by uh, human beings. So that's a shift which is going to take place. So, um, and the other shift that we are going to see is from process-centric tasks to tasks which are most physically used. I think organizations and employees will, while they, while they will continue to respect processes, but I think the shift would be towards um, valuing what is unique in them. And I think that's where the workforce will focus on. Uh, in the nature, when it comes to the nature of work and the workforce, we'll also see hierarchical organization structures are going to melt away and that those structures will move away see more flat structures coming in, impacting uh, the work and the workplace as well. So um, interestingly, this will also call for certain specific skills that people need to develop. So I think for leaders to manage and to lead this new workplace and the new workforce, the challenge for the leaders should be to develop the ability to balance between business outcomes and talent engagement. How do you, you know, meet your business outcomes on one hand and also keep your talent engaged, manage your cost, manage your revenue, manage your profitability, also keep your employees happy. So that's going to be a very, very big uh, challenge uh, for, for the leaders. For the managers, I think the challenge is going to be um, how do they uh, lead a workforce which is not just men and women, but it's always men and women leading people. But how do they lead a workforce which the blend of which is hybrid, which is not just men and machines, but it's also millennials, contract employees, gig employed uh, employees, uh, part-time employees. You know, I think it's going to really make the job of the manager difficult and manager really need to develop the ability to, to lead men and machines at the same time. And we don't know what is in store for us in the future. While today, um, you know that men uh, work, men and women work for uh, five days a week, eight hours a day, 
and so on. But machines can just work around the year, around the month, around the, around the week, 24 hours a day. They don't have to take leave. And how do you really allocate work between men and machines who have different work timings and then the work pattern is very different? How do you really do plan is that? And are we are we heading towards a future where the scenes will start bossing over men? Will men report into uh, robots in the future? We don't know what is in store for us in the future. I think that's going to make the task of the manager complex. For employees, for workforce in general, I think they really have to become more agile, more flexible, more adaptable, more collaborative, uh, develop the ability to work uh, across the globe, across cultures, work with global teams, and so on. I think these are some of the shifts that we're going to see at the workplace. And this is also going to drive the need for these newer skills and competencies. Back yeah, to you. thank you. Thank you, Suya. You touched upon a very important area, which uh, in my Earthful organization, we used to talk about a world called a humbot world. Where, uh, uh, can you uh, can the other panelists hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Mm, so what I was referring to is something uh, a world which is going to be a realistic world in the future. Something we uh, we in my Earthful organization talk about is a humbot world. It has to definitely be a coexistence because because we have taken those steps and advanced into those areas. So now quickly moving on to, uh, to Shobna. Shobna, uh, I believe you have spent your entire corporate career in TAPAIR, right? So you would have seen things, you know, right from the start to where you have uh, headed to. And there would be a massive, massive shift the way you, uh, you know, you have adopted technology and how that technology has shaped your works uh, you know your workforce uh, shobna so 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 shobna from your standpoint and you you being a heavyweight within the organization handling key portfolios like technology innovation learning there would be a constant pressure on you to keep thinking and you know innovating around each of these areas so shobna from your point of view how has adoption of technology a going to change the workforce a from your standpoint and how do you see in a larger balance from a country view, how things are going to shift. Shovna? You're on mute. Shovna, you're on mute. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, thanks, Abhishek. So to come to, uh, in terms of the way the whole transformation is happening. I think uh, many of them, uh, many of my fellow panelists did share this whole thing of actually the pace accelerating. And uh, I would say the pace is accelerated to an unimaginable level today. You know, the transformation that we used to talk, maybe if I if I were to put in the context of um, my own organization, uh, TAFE, Tractors and Farm Equipment Limited, we are one of the largest manufacturers of tractors, both for the domestic and the export market. Um, so if you look at, look at, if I were to look at it that a couple of years back, maybe in uh, uh, early 2000, 1998, 99, etc., when we implemented SAP, the, 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 it, it was, you know, one of the largest initiatives that we spoke about, and we did the implementation at six months time, and we had all India Big Bang implementation, and it was one of the biggest, best implementation that we thought we had ever done. In fact, all the remote locations we connected by VSATs, and we put in all on porta cabins, we, because our, 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 our depots and area offices are way down into the villages, and in these villages, we need to put in, you know, Connectivity was an issue. We put VSATs on, uh, what do you call it, as porta cabins. We got the ship containers, converted them into offices, powered them by with UPS, put the VSATs on top of it, and connected our remote lo lo locations way back in 2000. So if you look at it, we, at that point of time, that was one of the biggest breakthroughs that we did in six months flat, etc. But today, when you talk about the pace at which we need to implement technologies, right? Is, is, is the expectations is far more higher because the life of an implemented, implemented technology or product is actually shrinking. 
the the pace of innovation in technology front itself is so fast that that we are actually always looking at how do we actually bring in new business models it's all about business models it's it's about making massive changes in the processes uh, per se and and of course improvements but then the the focus is can we bring in new business models with the kind of changes that is happening the new technologies in terms of uh, i think some of my colleagues did mention i think romi also mentioned analytics and cognitive in talking about platform ecosystems we're talking about what social can do yes somebody talked about security and all this whole whole front that is happening now and which is creating actually a new consumer experience the consumer experience is different expectations is also getting on to be higher and higher and in these context we are talking about actually how do we get a better experience for them with with sensors into the product sensors into everything possible right from the light that we have the fans that we have which are all all there been there but the expectation now is in terms of every way how do we integrate artificial intelligence machine learning and iot and each bit of this and bots that somebody talked about how do we bring this in order to improve the productivity in the organization in order to be on a different game all together continuously so if if if, if, if to coming back to your uh, uh, thing what is what is changing is the pace at which it is it it, it needs to be done Uh, second thing being able to adapt this technology appropriately as needed technology for the sake of technology is not going to take us anywhere are we able to think that way and to think that way we need a large set of people in the organization thinking differently and that's why i like the session that you have put in i mean those organizers have been put this topic together that it's it is it, this 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 two two aspects have to run very very well uh, together it's technology and it's about people and the, the adoption of people and uh, in fact we used to say you know there are few innovative people who think about new things to be done it it is just not possible that way every person is responsible to think innovatively and bring changes to the processes that they are responsible for the new business models that they can spin off be, be, be it in uh, supply chain or be it in sales and marketing or be it even hr can what can you think through very differently and you find opportunity for the organization to expand and grow you know so the growth mindset is something which is which is possible with every single person not for their own own career path but growth for the organization and this calls for a, a different amount a kind of mindset right and i would like to touch upon this point about mindset and mind space right as some one of you uh, spoke some time back i'm going off from it off to, to what i had thought i would present but taking the points that what you were talking uh, all of you were talking i thought this is very important in this context to say what is the mind space that we have for innovation and today with the way it is going that we all are working around 14 16 hours a day saturday is not a saturday anymore i don't know how it is for many of you in your organization for a saturday is not a, a saturday or a sunday that where we think okay we it's personal there's no boundaries between official work and personal life for us anymore we work 24 hours all the time our mobiles are on any call has to be attended to we tend to work because we are trying to run at a pace so so that we are able to make up for all that we have lost right all that we have and coming i'm talking about coming from an industry that we, we have done well agri industry has been supported by the government has been uh, we have tremendous and it is a core core area which needs all the support we have been doing well in spite of it we are trying to catch up catch up for all that is lost up and when we are trying to catch up is there a mind space for innovation and that is where the hr needs to step in and to come in and uh, there is a whole lot of work required to create the mind space for being able to reflect learn and then think how to apply imagination doesn't happen if you don't have mind space and that's a core area that as as as, as technology and hr people need to uh, focus on see how do we bring that space into thing the second second thing is in terms of how how do we as leadership uh, uh, when we look at of the transformation we have done uh, just, just to give a probably let me quote an example so that it's just i'm talking about uh, since the covid uh, 
started and uh, we did really didn't have much lock, lock, lockdown of course people like me and all the uh, all the it folks maybe quite a large number of the uh, uh, other folks would have had this advantage of working from home but manufacturing plant the manufacturing people have to come to the plant r and d yes we had 50% probably uh, working from home the rest had to come to office because we we couldn't afford to lose that because that was the season time and there was expectations the farmers are looking for vehicles and there was a huge demand that needs to be filled up and how did you cope with it the whole coping of it went through in terms of being working from home as some of you mentioned so i did hear some people saying productivity went down and i was i was at the day telling no productivity didn't go down for us productivity went up unbelievable levels because people were connected with the, the day it was decided all the technology measures that we put in in terms of a bcp you know business continuity plan came into play we we hired back borrowed put put all our old machines repaired them and sent it all to each person's houses got them all put the securities up we had the security fair amount of investments done and all that came up in terms of being able to people working from home and that stretched of course it stretched i was coming to the point of the innovation in the mind space and that is a time that i found we could from the it side could spend time in closing our deals we closed some of the very big deals that we wanted to why because we could focus we wouldn't get distracted back at any cost we would, the the work from home and and this the situation that was it it had two impacts one we never thought of covid fairly most of us remained healthy because mind was not on fear mind was on innovation mind was on in terms of what are the new things that we can do and what we had to do which was planned which would have happened taken another 6 months we closed the deals in one month large contracts we closed in one month because the whole team was focused and you know uh, we there was no walking around of course we would have developed the back pains by sitting in the same seat but that's the side of it but what i would i, I would believe firmly believe it brought us prioritization focus and productivity at that time but that's not the one one once in you know we can't talk about it it happened but over a long run just to continue it on the long run the people who will continue to work from home and people who would continue to work from office that that is something a key area which hr is working as you said and as it happens people will definitely find the productivity improves in terms of the way you work from home there is a side impact there is the the family suffers uh, the family doesn't have a private space for itself all of all 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 people don't have the luxuries of having uh, independent rooms which are just made converted into office spaces there are people who live in smaller houses and i have seen some remarkable uh, 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 work happening from uh, remote rural areas we engaged a, a call center with a, a which works in rural india and when i saw some of the um, agents working uh, it brought tears to my eyes that that even at the covid situation we were able to provide employment to these people they were working from their little huts right and and with just on there's no table they're sitting on the floor and the little little platform near the kitchen which is uh, which is mud on that they have a uh, having their computer and they were working on 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 the call center so it's 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 a um, uh, covid has taught us a lot of things but I'm, i i would like to say it, it depends from industry to industry the productivity that went down or no but if you can manage to do it productivity goes down provided that we give them the right tools to be able to work and that again is technology what we couldn't have adopted for years today it has got adopted within days right as as somebody also mentioned that even the older generation have got got got, got comfortably used so it is not working from home as a technology it is all about artificial intelligence it is it's about the social how it can be used it's about the various things that is coming in terms of the iot and the customer experience the bot and these technologies are definitely transforming the way we live and there is no option but for us to work collectively to create the mind space for people to be innovative as hr folks and how do we get the leadership actually to think that way and uh, one of the i'm just going to give you one small example and stuff uh, and uh, is is about how we have made it that leadership shares for the new generation in 5 minutes 10 minutes not more than 10 minutes 
not more than 10 minutes in any way because the younger generation doesn't listen to more videos also for seven minutes. They will go to what they want and do it. And we have tools today in the market to make it happen. So if you want the younger generation to listen and learn, and you want to share your experience, so we, we are forcing leaders to talk, talk on customer experience. You talk about customer centricity, talking about virtually leading, talking about um, agility, which is agile transformation per se. And, and in, this is causing leaders to learn. And leaders learn. And when they have to learn, they have to when they want to speak, they have to learn. And this is causing leaders to become open. And as Peter Senge said, if we want transformation in the organization, we need to create a learning organization. A learning organization which is continuously adapting, bringing in the capability in the organization to expand itself to what is required. It is able to unlearn and learn and thereby actually get to more productivity. And therefore I see people changing roles and responsibilities. I don't see there are more jobs that will be created in every organization as such. This is my thing because you like to skill your people, the, all the robotics and bots, et cetera, will automate quite a lot. Thank you. Oh, Shobna, that is like your sea of information and there's so much positivity around that, uh, around things, you know, when things started to, you know, seem bleak for most of the organization, really really great important points to hear and and i'll take away one thing out of that is 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 we are not able to switch out of the way we have been working in this really remote way so the continuum tends to exist uh, so last not but the least uh, i will i will go quickly switch over to vikas vikas uh, with you know remote working is going to stay for some point of time and and it's obviously not by you know choice it's by force because the way things have been panning out it'll take some more of uh, some amount of time for things to recover and get back to normal so i would want your view quickly on how do you see companies overcome this challenge of remotely working and having the productivity in place and what are the challenges they should particularly look into to improve the productivity of employees vikas You're on mute. Because can you hear me? Oh, we can't hear you, Vikas. Because you're on mute. Uh, doesn't look like he's on mute. Uh, he's having, having the, Yeah, he's having audio. Uh, Maybe because, you can sorry. Him. Yeah, because can you quickly join uh, back, re-login again? Maybe it's a headset problem. Yeah, <laughs> headset <laughs> problem. Sometimes it's connectivity <laughs> problem. Uh, you know, I think uh, we're talking about all the things that we face every day. Right. Okay, uh, so uh, we are left with that about uh, more than five minutes, more than half an hour. So quickly jumping onto the next uh, theme and once Vikas uh, jumps back into this call, I will probably put two, both the questions to him at one go. So uh, uh, I believe uh, Rahul has to step out of both of the, Rahul quickly uh, uh, moving to the theme that, you know, uh, the CIO and CHRO synergies have to have to become stronger the way things are shaping up for the future. How do you think uh, the digital and future technologies, you know, with CIO being the proponent, how is it impacting the role of HR? Uh, uh, okay. uh, quickly, Rahul, I'll, I'll just give you two minutes uh, sure, and I'll... important points around it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. See, yes, there has to be a right synergy between the CHRO and CIO. And uh, I think uh, the CHRO also need to act like a CIO also, because he need to drive the technology within his own functions and also the adoption of the technology with the larger population or the, or the employees. But somewhere, I think the CHRO need to start acting like a technology person also, because then only the adoption of the technology or then only the transformation within the function can, uh, can happen. Otherwise, it will be very, very uh, difficult. The HR need to start behaving like more like a product managers. The reason being because whether it's a talent management, compensation benefit, they need to start looking 
their own deliveries or own services or own programs like a product uh, uh, like a product and how these product will be delivered to the end user and what the end user will look at so i think that is the second point so i i think the same strategy is driven by my chro internally which is adesh goel and he always uh, forces us to think like a product manager and he himself is a technology background so he drives the same type of uh, technology driven practices within the organization how we can enable that so i think these are the two points i want to leave with thank you abhishek yeah 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 really really important points thinking like a product manager and you know defining the way the whole organization should shape up because that's that's give you out of box thinking and and really innovative way of thinking uh, uh, just a quick check is vikas back are you back vikas you're on mute now yeah now you're on mute somebody oh, need to uh, unmute sorry i i think i i couldn't unmute because it just kept on saying that the host needs to unmute so i'm not sure if i can be heard or i i acted like the host this time <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Um, uh, Vikas, I'll pose two questions. So uh, no. you have got rough, uh, you have to got two aspects of the answer. One is how what are the challenges around remote working, and what are the steps uh, uh, you think the company should start taking to because because this is going to be a status quo for some time, and uh, and there is some uh, you know companies have started already announcing that this is going to be the new normal. So from uh, a from that standpoint, if you could answer that first, sure. Um, so. Um... I, I will attempt to cover that, and um, and actually, um, as an organization, we did it extremely well because we we got a very robust uh, business continuity plan or a program that we were running for almost more than three years or four years now. You know, so but I mean, coming back to your point on that, okay, how this this challenge needs to be kind of can be handled much more effectively. It is just that now the whole ecosystem has to come together and i will just take you guys back um, towards january and february you know when uh, we all so our call started crisis call started from there given that we have a global operations and uh, we were kind of uh, starting kind of giving uh, handling starting as handling crisis for china etc so even knowing that these thing is on the way that is going to come forward you know now um and also um in remote working was part of our dna as it is said we, we are running this program for long so we we designed that nearly 50% of our workforce should be able to work remotely um and obviously you have to work along with the client's requirement and other things that that have to deal with but but we had those critical numbers which may many people may not have it uh, but but we we were also looking across that how we can start enabling our um, fixed rest force right people who are having desktops or the thin clients etc but absolutely there was no clarity around or there was no decision making that was being done from the government side in to say of how sec compliance should be followed we we nobody has that clarity of how the dot compliance should be followed until last minute dot was just talking about Uh, use the fixed ip address how do you do how you enable uh, remote working on the uh, fixed ip and what are the solutions so you go to a service provider and you says yeah so you take the lease line and will enable at individual home right you are talking 100000 people and you are talking 100000 lease line and how you going to build that you know so uh, so if you if you look across even though uh, um, we are very proud of that uh, we could able to enable 98% of the workforce very quickly productive i'm talking about the billable workforce there uh, but we could have done much much better even these two decisions were taken ahead but they were dependent on the government decision one was that what will be the asset compliance to be followed and second was how dot will react uh, for that and that itself created a huge crisis altogether you know um so once you you achieve that story uh, then uh, everybody was nobody no ciso or no nobody from client side uh, will give you any relaxation on the security controls that you will need you know so it wasn't that 
how you can enable your workforce it was to ensure that how you are ensuring those controls which were there on your end mobile endpoint should also be there in a fixed endpoint to be shipped out you know it was only that we been being fortunate that some of the controls like encryption and everything else we had went ahead than anybody else so we may not struggle but all of us had and we had to ensure that the dlp have been installed or the remote filterings are enabled also on the fixed asset that have to be shipped out you know so those controls were to be kind of and again there was not very clear guidelines even coming back from from the client because we are serving client and you can't dilute any of those side of it and you know that how cyber attacks has happened during this covid period because that's where everybody wants to take an advantage of of those situations you know so not only that then doing those enablement once you even achieve that uh, how you do the last mile connectivity you know if you if you talk about the last mile connectivity and you have folks uh, who are kind of working from home say you have so many people who were kind of uh, working from pgs you know and so so they were just kind of moving out uh, from their base location you know so uh, so there wasn't uh, and even today you don't have a, a very strong last mile connectivity solutions available you go to the oems and if you say that can you ensure that the quality of services will be met with nobody can assure that uh, the quality of service will be there you know um and it also very important is what are the your line of business you know um again in every large enterprise you will have different kind of a uh, line of business is like um uh, we we already spoke about how engineering line of service works you know their requirements and their demands are very different right uh, still infra folks can work uh, without not of hika but um, but the requirements of of the engineering folks and if you have got 25 to 30000 folks who are into those service line how do you enable them their requirement itself um, is a is a very very uh, difficult challenging game across uh, nobody spoke about here how you keep your team who is serving as a front line workers motivated you know and i had i had nearly 500 people uh, working for me when everybody was talking about covid and saying that we want ourselves to be protected um, i have and and there was no government guidelines available you know uh, when people were talking about say uh, mr modi came and said okay it's done right and you have business who is saying how do you make them work so there was no guideline you have uh, you have you have dms who have made responsible saying that uh those guidelines should be followed through but still you have those your team members finding out the ways to reach office right to deliver uh, the things for the business you know uh, and how do you keep them motivated how you are ensuring that uh, and and they are uh, lower end of the pyramid you know so um if their friend uh, what actually they get is and how you do you keep them motivated how do you ensure that it is not about their motivation about the safety as well right what are the different what are the different measures that have to be taken uh, across for all of them um so those are the aspects which were kind of uh, uh, we had to deal all of that right and um only and say um, now we if we talk about that how probably sustenance should come in uh, fortunately yesterday night um, duty has released the new guidelines about how to kind of enable uh, work from home or uh, different scenarios obviously uh, again mr modi tweeted ai we are making it simple but how simple it will be it's only we will get to know once we actually get into the reality of what does it mean Uh, but the positive thing is we are getting a framework about that but i personally still do not see what is a framework from the sec side of it organization which we follow the sec compliance rules i still do not know how the taxation guidelines are still in place around this you know because again those are the game changer with the reference to how you can utilize your assets um, from from different sides of it 
you know, so those are the things that at least um, we will have to absorb, figure it out how to make it happen. And when it comes to a large organization, and if you have to deal with all of this, nothing can will will happen until you right off build for crisis. So if your enablement is not there by design, um, you know, it is not from the technology perspective. It is from all side of it. You will have to talk from the people side of it, process side of it, infrastructure side of it, and the government policy side of it, right? Until or unless that will not happen, you know, again, the gone, gone are the days when you're talking about from a BCP side, you say 25% recovery, you have uh, near shore, offshore, or there. Oh, those are the things that are not going to work anymore post of this COVID. You have to see that how things can work. So that's where your uh, whole business processes have to be designed. Um, we Regulations have to be aligned to those aspects side of it. Um, and we also need to ensure that in all of this, especially around now, it is not only about IT, ITS, how your physical security, how your, um, uh, how your infrastructure security, and most importantly, how the privacy things will also be handled through, you know? So if you see even today's world, when uh, when we have kind of uh, said, okay, remote working is there and a lot of the financial institutions, you're talking about, okay, how we can implement the video monitoring solutions there, right? What are you doing with the video monitoring solution? Your camera is continuously on um, and somebody is just looking at you all the time. Uh, so is it, is you, can you do it through the privacy guideline that will come into picture, you know? So um, these are the things that will require a uh, lot of discussions, a lot of innovations will come through on that. Um, obviously, um, another very, very key aspect is around the collaboration side of it. That's something people become used to. Uh, I think what we may not have achieved for the, at least for the next five years uh, from the collaboration side of it, we achieved it in, in first two or three months now, you know. It may not be as effective that it is, but again, I, I believe there will be a lot of innovation will again uh, come into these areas where uh, probably uh, those, uh, what I say the barriers still we have in our mind that we have to be, will be more effective when we are face to face, probably may go away uh, from there. Um, so these are the things and we all have to be kind of uh, ahead of the curve and have to assume that uh, uh, this will continue now forever. So that's how if you have to service have to be designed only then probably we'll able to uh, be, be able to stabilize this or sustain this going forward. It has its own uh, consequences and there are a lot of HR expert on this, on this panel. So probably I will not like to go into that side of it. Uh, but trust me, after working for 16 to 18 hours for many months and not knowing how far it will go, automatically your your productivity comes down, your brain stop reacting uh, to all of that. Uh, so that is the another respect probably we we'll all need to learn how to deal with it. Um, so yeah. that's all yeah. from my side. Fine. Yeah, great, great. Because in fact, you went into the area which started getting technical and, and at least people would have started realizing that it's just not the thought or the idea which helps you deliver the final outcome. We have CIOs on the table. So, so when it actually comes to ground and executing them, there is a whole different reality around that. Uh, okay, because I'll give you a pause here, I will come back to you quickly with the next question. So, so a panelist, uh, uh, we have what about 20 minutes le uh, left. So we have about six to seven more uh, you know, thoughts around the question. So I'll, I'll just urge you to be very concise and precise uh, uh, so that we respect the time and, uh, and we have some time for the Q&A session. So quickly moving to uh, you know uh, uh, to Vidya, Vidya uh, with this uh, uh, with this whole you know workforce becoming so active and the CIO and CHROs are in thinking innovative ways to provide an end user experience to the your internal customers, right? So how do you think is a in terms of how HR can collaborate along with the CIO's office to provide that experience and how critical do you think is it from an employee standpoint? 
end user experience yeah so thanks for that question uh, abhishek so clearly uh, you know the approach to building the systems and i think shobhana touched upon this the, you should not build a technology or use technology only for the sake of technology right it has to be uh, for a larger purpose i mean by which i mean uh, uh, currently if you look at uh, the uh, Uh, employees that most of our organizations and i i'm sorry i will refer to the it and its organizations the age group of the people the people are really really young so they have they, this is the generation uh, which has only seen uh, you know which has only seen a phone a mobile phone they don't really know what a traditional phone looks like right and they are the uh, you know generation of an iphone and you know the touch and feel you know you ask them to dial they will not know how to dial now with that kind of an experience which they have outside of the work and when if they come into work and they don't get an experience which is more to, more human centric then i think uh, the whole purpose of the it or the cio organization absolutely collapses it fails i mean hence I, th- i i truly believe that the experience that we need to give to our employees is not because hr wants us to give that employee but more because the employees want that experience so we really need to provide for that so uh, it is it should be human centric but i think i i firmly believe that to get to achieve human centric uh, uh, experience you need to tie in both process technology and human centric all together to p- provide a solution otherwise uh, otherwise i don't think uh, you know most of the transformations that we talk of uh, will fail if uh, we do not keep uh, keep uh, that uh, you know as the uh, um, as as the core of any transformation piece having said that i i i i do i do think uh you know in genpact uh, we have our vision our vision is very clear and this is what uh, piyush r chro will talk about he says that we have to provide consumer grade digital experience to our employees and more so i think at this point in time because uh, we have to enable them to work from anywhere so for them to access you know their trainings for them to access uh, for employees to easily fill in uh, their uh, time sheets to request for leave to look for their pf uh, requirements all of it needs to be enabled in a way that they can work from anywhere and it has to be quite intuitive in design so i i truly believe that you know uh, the more joined up to the hip that the chro and the cio organization is it's better for the users and for the user community because they are the ones who are generally going to benefit so i am cutting it way too short there are several examples so i can you know yes. i can narrate quite a bit but over to you abhishek Yeah, thank you, Vidya, for being considerate. Quickly moving to Vinita. Vinita, what we have seen is, you know, uh, employees continue to uh, be in a in a state that you know they just don't get a relief out of the work. They are not able to switch off that often. You know, the way things used to happen in the past, right? You know, once we step out of the office, we just shut down, right? So, so, so the employee well-being becomes a very, very critical part, and both from a physical as well as a uh, as a mental standpoint. So, uh, so. Uh, uh, Vinita the question to you is how critical it is to drive a very very robust employee wellbeing plan in circum- circumstances as this and how how the cio's office can help you drive it in a very effective manner yeah vinita uh, th- thank you abhishek and uh, i'll also be very very quick uh, in the interest of time uh, so so work from home or work from anywhere it's it's actually a double edged sword so we have heard of a lot a lot of positive but there are a lot of negatives as well and employees as you you know rightly mentioned these days employees are not able to have those water cooler conversations physical interaction human you know we are all after all human beings uh, need those interactions so you know we are all worn out fatigue i think a lot uh, which imp- companies have been doing and which we need to do more is on how do you connect with employees virtually uh, have those you know virtual hug sessions with the employees so this this all can, can be enabled through technology i'm not saying that technology can take the place of human interaction but you know we can do the best so you know um, have uh, uh, have more of video sessions for instance involve families uh, once in a while while you're having these uh, sessions uh, with the employees have some sort of celebration not just work related and uh, then again technology has helped us enable these uh, one to one uh, employee assistant programs like counseling and stuff that also is happening online today so you know we sort of enabled it for our employees to to take help from there so a lot of help that uh, technology can do for us in terms of ensuring that there is well being that uh, you know we spread amongst the employees but then again uh, the other piece of where technology can come in is um, 
I think it was Romy who mentioned in the, at the very beginning, from pre-hire to post-retire, how can technology help us give that seamless experience to employees? And Vidya was also mentioning those digital natives. I mean, they have just, they just know all of this. So, you know, uh, that also can create a, a lot of uh, well-being amongst employees and this superlative experience that we can give, give to employees. So I, I think it's uh, without doubt that uh, the CIO and the CHRO's office really have to work hand in hand and going forward to create that culture well-being uh, amongst the employees uh, in very short Abhishek. Yeah, thank you, thank you. But really, really strong points over there, uh, Vinita, though you're concise. Thank you, thank you for those, you know, important insights. Now, quickly moving on to Srikant. Srikant, you, you still wanted to touch upon the technology aspect. Yes. I'm going to give you that question is, so people you know, CIA, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, people aspect. So, so both from, A, from, you know, you being the CIO, you know, you are uh, you are the flag bearer of bringing that change from a digital adoption perspective, right? What are the possible challenges both you see from a people perspective in terms of their mindset to move their way? Because you you cater to a very multi generational workforce yeah. at this point of time, right? Right. Don't so, 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 so yeah, yeah. So 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 if we could keep it concise and you know okay. to the point. So I, I uh, you know in the interest of uh, of time, I I just made a couple of points and I'll just rattle it out, right? Uh, like, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, Vidya was mentioning, right? Uh, you know, we are all uh, fundamentally uh, social beings, right? We need that one-to-one -one touch. And I think that's uh, fundamentally missing, right? A lot of times what happens is when I set up uh, Zoom calls or Teams calls or whatever else, everybody is connected without video, right? You have to keep prodding people to switch on the video. And the fact that they're not on video isn't because they're they're sitting in a t-shirt, right? That might be part of the problem, right? Maybe they're taking a shower at 11.30 in the, in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I think fundamentally, a lot of them are uh, somewhat uh, uh, embarrassed, right? Be, uh, because of the their environment, right? They're living in one, two bedroom houses. They are living in PGs. It's not a very... And, uh, you know, Shobana was mentioning this, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, heartwarming, but at the same time, you realize the pain that they go through, right? They don't want to show their background, right? And so Zoom and Teams and all these, uh, you know, technologies have come up with virtual backgrounds like the one that I have right now, right? But it's, it's really, really hard, right? I think the effect on mental health cannot be ignored, right? I'm telling you guys, this is not sustainable, okay? Everybody is getting all giddy and, uh, you know, weak in, in the knees on, on how uh, this, this new normal is going to, you know, shape our future. But I think it's all uh, BS, to be honest with you, right? I think the effect on mental health is tremendous. Uh, a McKinsey paper recently published, right? One in uh, four people, that is 25% people reported binge drinking at least once a week, okay? 20%, that is one in five, uh, reported uh, taking prescription drugs for non-medicinal purposes, right? Uh, you know, one in seven people have been going to illicit drugs, right? Depression, anxiety, these are very real, okay? Domestic, you know, the arrests for domestic violence uh, in homes has gone to an all-time high, especially in the UK, Europe, and, and uh, you know, Central Europe and, and in America, okay? Now, when, when people used to go to work for those seven, eight, 10 hours, they were away from their home and that gave them a certain amount of protection. Now that's gone. You cannot ignore this. When people are working 14, 16 hours a day, like, like uh, Vikas and Chovna said, you know, it's not sustainable, guys, right? I, I don't know what you think about it, but beyond a certain point, you'll have mental breakdowns, right? Suicide rates are up. You, you, all you have to do is Google, uh, you know, mental health and COVID-19, and you will get papers after papers and statistics after statistics on how miserable this is, right? If we don't take responsibility for this and build in technologies and build in capabilities and policies, right? We are going to look at a dramatically different workforce next year or the year after. This is not sustainable, right? Plus, let's take a very, very quick example of a difficult conversation, right? Uh, now, in our offices, we get wrong with teams and then we ask some people why they didn't do certain things or we prod certain people who need to be prodded, 
right? To, to get the work done. How do you, how do, you do that on, on video call? You're screaming at somebody, you know that their wife or their parent or their you know, spouses or whoever else, right? Are listening in. If they're not listening in, at least from the way these people are reacting, they know something is wrong, right? How do you have those difficult conversations? The privacy of the office is the privacy of the office, right? You, you cannot simply say, oh, well, there's the new normal and, and you know what, yay, let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Ain't gonna work, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 Shri, you have, you have hold on to your point uh, and, and you truly believe that, you know, this is not the future, but-, but It's know, a reality. <laughs> It's a reality. Yeah. We have to we have to uh, understand that a certain percentage of the population will always work from home. A certain percentage of the population need that that office space. But I, I'm I'm telling you guys that we need to pull ourselves from this, you know, dreamy land of of uh, the new normal. It it's not a dreamy land, right? Yeah. Thank you, Shri. Uh, quickly moving to Shobna. Shobna, uh, I have just got a confirmation that we can extend this session max by ten minutes. Quickly moving on to you. Uh, Shobna, I think, you know, with all this happening and with this, all this uncertainty being there, productivity, mental well-being, but one thing is very crucial from an organization standpoint is your learning and development, right? That cannot ever take a backseat. So, so, so from that perspective in the present, in a current circumstance and you being a chief learning of, officer, how, on a, how critical and what are the different ways you take a look at that area so that you have that competitive edge still in the present circumstances. Shobna, quickly. Okay, I think I partially touched upon it in, in my yes. early conversation in saying it, you know, we, we run a, a corporate university and we we have converted everything into in terms of short videos, three minutes, five minutes, etc. Right. But I think what to coming to connecting to the point of in terms of technology, we need to see that how do we gamify it, make it fun for people to learn. Right. So this this it is it's very easily possible in the digital world. I mean, uh, the, see, you if you can have all the meetings online, you you can recognize people with points, give them coupons, give them things to buy something at Amazon. You can get something picked up and dropped, etc., into their houses for doing courses. So we we do a lot of learning uh, digitally and with, with a lot of gamification, so that people really enjoy uh, doing it and do a lot of sharing too. But I think I, I, I given the context in which you know some time back um, Shrikant spoke about, I don't I, I, I feel incomplete if I don't talk about this in terms of how HR and CIOs can collaborate, uh, seeing on the learning and development what CLO, CLOs can do to collaborate on that space of the mental well-being. Right, the two or three competencies that I think is very important if, if the organization has to grow is in, in terms of being able people becoming knowledgeable in terms of what is digital so that the stress level goes down. You know, every time you're encountered or something new to be done, there is a stress. The stress can become converted into a positive stress if you have the luxury of time. If you do not have the luxury of time, it becomes very intense and it affects the mental health. So keep people updated on what's happening, making it interesting so that they actually learn and they get comfortable. One, second thing is, how do we build mindful leaders? Right? We must focus on mindful leaders and, and, and we must focus on ethical leaders. These are something which we need to build if we want the next generation to be comfortable with the way it is going. And as he rightly said, it is, it is affecting a lot of people with their mental health. You wouldn't believe, but let me admit here, just, just 10 days back, I, I came back to work on Monday. Before that, I had taken 10 days off. I had not taken for years in my career. I've never taken a, a, a long leave until it was on a holiday going abroad. And you know, there was a purpose. Sitting at home, I have never taken leave. But I understood that I was my, my mind was such a clutter. I knew if I don't take a break, and then say, hey, clean up the mess and say, these are the few things that I will do. Beyond that, I can't, I don't want to take it, right? If I take it, it is affecting me. Right? Your physical well-being and mental well-being, spiritual well-being is absolutely paramount. The growth is possible only if all these three are okay. So I think the, the, the spiritual quotient should be focused on. Mindful leadership should be focused on. Being ethical needs to be focused on. 
and and when we are pressurized we tend to shout and that is my one indication shrikant i will tell you i decided to take a break because i knew i was shouting and i knew that the impact that it would create on somebody who else who's sitting somewhere else you know so so you just realize that hey my character has changed i'm not the same person that i was the devil in me is awakened shut down shut down shut down come back to normal and get back so i think hr can actually force people to take off if they have not taken for long be mindful that people are mindful leaders and are ethical leaders i have not answered your point but i thought i if i don't say that i i i i, I need to conclude on what shikman was saying that <laughs> important Thank no you. in so many words in your first question you had already touched upon and very important point something you really touched upon is the spiritual question that something this younger generation doesn't understand spiritual question is nothing to do about you know going to the idol worship and, yes that's nothing to do in fact my 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 dad tried to infuse this within me what does spiritual question mean actually it's not about going and doing the world it's about detaching yourself from the worldly things sit back reflect upon think about that positive energy get that positive energy back into yourself and then go back to work very 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 important point and abhishek so when abhishek. people asked me why did why have you taken off i said it is for my internal fires <laughs> and they asked me but my internal fires was just that to raise my spiritual quotient that i be balanced with all the stress that's going around thank you thank you thank you shobhna for the uh, you know strong strong point now quickly uh, you know moving to surya uh, uh, surya you know undoubtedly by this time we have realized that the ch cio and chro collaboration has to be there and very very important right but how do you rationalize the intervention of technology because you are the controllers of how much technology should be provided to your workforce right so and from your standpoint what are the critical technologies you know both cios office and chr office should decide upon and should be passed on to the workforce uh, if you could be just succinct around it surya surya you are on mute yes i was not able to unmute it said the host is not allowing you to can you hear me now Yes, yes. You are giving more pointers for, to Srikant now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when we have a conversation, uh, Srikant and I over a cup of coffee will talk about the positive sides of uh, uh, work from home as well. Uh, but we'll not get into that debate now. Um, I think if there is a better time for HR, CHROs, and CIOs to come together and work together, I think this is now. And uh, when CHROs and Uh, CIOs start talking. Uh, CIOs talk about systems, architecture, data integration, and so on. CHROs talk about or they think about engagement, retention, experience, and so on. But how do you really bring these two together? It's important that these two are brought together. And what are the technology that can make make it possible? i think we have talked about uh various technologies but the one that come to my mind top of the mind we call would be ai analytics ar vr etc i think that's where the convergence happens um if the chro thinks about employee experience and some of my co panelists talked about it um you know chr the employee experience is all about speed or power to the employee convenience better access self service and fun i think that's what the employee is looking at apart from um other aspects like career progress uh engagement challenging opportunities and so on but when we talk about the day to day experience and when we talk about millennials these are the ones that come to our to our mind so who can enable that i think technology the cio or the cto can enable that and that's possible when they work together and collaborate and i'll give you a couple of examples in the interest of time i think today technology cio and then chro can work together use um for example artificial intelligence and use digitization can they really crunch their 
hiring, onboarding, and training timeline. If they can do that, they are going to drive productivity. They are going to drive uh, faster. They're going to drive speed to efficiency. They're also going to drive employee savings. But then CHRO and then CIO need to work together. Because I'm also, I'm, I'm a learning leader. I, I bring in more learning examples. The other example that comes to my mind is learning in the flow of work. Today, with so much of demand on productivity, demand on people's bandwidth, roles, jobs becoming more and more demanding, it's impossible for people to step out and go through classroom sessions for two days, three days, and one week. But if the city, CIO and the CHRO can work together, and bring learning in the flow of work, and today that has been possible. Today, uh, we are talking about learning in the flow of work. When you are working, you can learn at the same time, in real time. You don't have to really go back to the classroom to learn. I think that collaboration can make it happen. So, but in the interest of time, there are more examples, but I just want to pick up two and then, and then share with you. But I think in reality, the CHRO and the CIO work together. I think Rahul talked about it. He said the CHROs now need to start thinking like CIOs. I think it's both ways. The CIOs also need to start thinking like CHROs. Uh, at the heart of the technology, I think what's important is employee first. Across the employee life cycle, we'll have to really plot technological interventions and then see how it can bring about a change in the employee experience, um, what convenience it can create, what opportunities can create, how can it drive productivity, how can it drive capability building? I think that's what we really have to look at across the employee life cycle. What are the tech interventions throughout? So the CHR and CI work together. I think one plus one can be three, five, 11, or it can be. Thank you. Great, great point, Surya, the multiplier effect, right? One plus one becomes 11 at times two. <laughs> I, I just got remembered about a Bollywood movie. I, I see Romy patiently hearing, and you know, Romy, the next one is to you. By this, by this, you know, we are on the almost on the top of the hour, but some sort of conclusion has come into picture that agile working is going to be the call of the future. So, from that standpoint, what are the synergies you see emerging between CHRO and CIO, and how they are, you know, stepping towards that to achieve a sort of a agile workplace? Uh, Romi, request you to be concise. Sorry for that. So I think a lot more have already been spoken by all the panelist members who I have iterated their views and which are very, very relevant. But if I try to take gist out of all the discussion, I see two things very clearly emerging. Number one, technology for all the workplace workforce has to move from a surviving context to thriving context. And when I use a word of thriving, we mean all the examples which are given that we are moving to a virtual collaboration, virtual productivity, managing remote employee life cycle, managing employee holistic health and well being, managing simplicity, managing innovation. It's all part of thriving. So, number one, technology progressively has to move from surviving to thriving. Number two, traditionally, we have been using technology largely for efficiency and effectiveness. The time has come where it has to go beyond efficiency and effectiveness, and it has to focus on disruption. That's the need of the hour. And if you keep these two contexts in mind, who else could be a better strategic partner than a CIO to handhold the CHRO to tell which technology to take, how to make it happen? Team has talked about uh, hardware, architecture, data, who, who else can guide it? So what is emerging very, very clearly is, yes, both have to play a role. CIO has to play a role of a CHRO. That means in his larger scheme of thinking of data, architecture, software, he has to bring a part of emotion. And CHRO in his role, he has to bring a part of technology. So both have to sit, both have to set the expectation, both have to set the experience. Expectation and experience is different. I don't want to repeat with a lot more have been said about experience. So I very clearly see 
a complementing role played by both of them where both have to wear the hat alternatively for cio chro make technology from surviving to thriving drive it beyond efficiency and effectiveness to disruption and partner for that thank you romi uh, so i have been getting the warnings on the time stream to wrap up vikas quickly last uh, you know jumping on to you before we call it a day uh, vikas uh, you know how do you drive digital dna because it has to be embedded within the dna when actually company start realizing in value so vikas your quick points around it i think vikas again has challenges Mm. Hi. Um, sorry. Yeah. Can, um, are you okay to kind of repeat your question? I'm so sorry because yeah. I, I had sorry. I had another call at five and I but I just staying on. So yeah, yeah. Vikas, just how to drive the digital DNA within an organization? Very very yes. concise. Yeah, very quickly. See, uh, digital DNA has multiple traits on there, right? Um. Um. But from when you for this purpose of this conversation, right? How um. you enable the continuous innovation that something is is extremely important uh, uh, when we are talking about the digital dna and how we going to get enabled through that right um how the dynamic skill building that will come into picture you know um because um, that's uh, shobhna picked up on on those aspects uh, very clearly that how we going to kind of uh, reskill folks um, bases in this changing environment that comes in um i i see one of the key element that will come uh, very quickly or is is required now even there and that's also we talking about is a, um, a real time and on demand requirement right everybody expect um, things to happen on a on a real time basis and when when it requires on on demand basis and we also need to kind of see that uh, we remove this de democratic uh, uh, boundaries etc so everybody has a similar experience all through so these are the key aspects and but there are multiple traits of this but these are the key aspects what i feel uh, are are going to key uh, to change the digital dna uh, going forward from here yeah thank you thank you because that was really quick and my apologies not being able to spare you more time around this uh, uh, so esteemed panelists thank you thank you for this enriching session there was so many you know pointers uh you know talked about touched upon pondered upon and we have to reflect back you know with all these important discussions and important areas touch upon how do we go back and reflect on them and start acting towards it the best part of the session was there were no single views there were contrary views and that's why you know the emotion started coming into our discussions and which is which makes the session more lively in nature thank you so just a closing remark that you know in some way or other as a panel as a group we think and we believe in some form that this is going to happen the future of workplace the future of work and the nature of jobs are going to change but as leaders as thinkers as mindful thinkers we have to bring a balance within it we have to take a very cautious approach so that we don't jump into something which again we have to call back and it actually hampers the organization and then slowly things don't fall into place the way it should actually so thank you thank you you know all my panelists and all the participants i'm extremely sorry we don't have much time to take uh, any more further questions from the participants thank you for joining this evening and hope you have a great weekend ahead and a great uh, year ahead and happy diwali to you all in advance thank you thank you everyone, thank you, everyone. Bye. bye thank bye. you